hi guys welcome back to the cortez my name is sa i am so glad you came across my video because today is a very special day today is october 10th and it is internationally recognized as world mental health day on october 10th every year we set aside this day to recognize and celebrate persons with lived experience with mental health conditions and we also use this day as an opportunity to create awareness and fight against stigma and discrimination. So if you know someone with lived experience with a mental health condition, just tell them happy World Mental Health Day. And I am so proud of you and I'm so proud of how far you have come and all the battles you have fought to get to where you are on your road to recovery. Trust me it will go a long way to make the person happy i always tell people you do not have to look at your road to recovery and say oh i'm not yet there like i'm i don't think i've reached my destination so i don't need to celebrate please celebrate every step you have made every crawl you have taken celebrate all the falls that you have had to rise up from it is your day and you deserve to celebrate and if you're a person without mental health condition use this day to find pictures or videos online and share on your social so that someone can come across it and learn about mental health thank you so much for always taking time to come back to watch my videos it means it means a lot to me and i hope that you will take this day as seriously as i am because me i signed my birthday and world bipolar day on march 10th i take this day really personal it is personal to me and i hope you take it personal too thank you so much for watching so this year like all other years there's always a theme and this year the theme is um workplace mental health this year we are advocating that employers need to prioritize mental health in the workplace why because if you think about it People spend a lot of time at work, most of their time at work, probably even most of their lives at work. Aside being at home or school, work is where you are most of the time. So if your mental health is not functioning at its best, you can't be productive, you can't function, you can't have good relationships with your work colleagues. You know, when the theme for this year's World Mental Health Day celebration was chosen, I was thinking that your workplace can be anywhere, you know, school can even be a workplace. So I was looking at it like everywhere it's, it's, it runs through everywhere where mental health should be prioritized everywhere in the church, in schools, in hospitals, in organized everywhere. It should just be prioritized. And since today's world mental health day, I figured I'll do a video for employers something i've never really done but i feel like i'm i can really share a lot of tips since i got fired from my job because i disclosed to my bosses at the time that i had lived experience with bipolar disorder that's a video for another day in fact i've already shot that video so check the description box and make sure that you get the link to that video and like the whole story is there so please make sure you check it out so these are three tips for employers who are working with persons living with mental health conditions N tip number one please be supportive to your staff who has a mental health condition i'm going to share my experience in 2019 Oh, no, it was rather 2018. In 2018, I had the opportunity to do my national service at Michelle Camp, one of the schools there. And my employer at the time, well, I call her my employer because, like, I was employed by Ghana, but she was my boss. My headmistress was very, very supportive. I had just graduated from school. This was my first time officially working, like, after school after school because the other stuff i did was during school when i was doing my internship this was after school so i was going to be there for literally one year and you know when service started i couldn't start at the same time with everybody because i was on admission 
at the hospital and because of a relapse and you know coming back you know when you like recovering from a relapse is like falling from it's like you were doing well on your mental health journey road to recovery you know climbing a mountain and then you have an episode a manic episode or a depressive episode it's like falling down from a mountain and having to start up right again from the bottom your bones are shattered you feel sore you are hurt you are struggling and you do have to rise because the journey never stops life is still moving on you still have to put in the work put in your effort so i remember when i was on admission my dad told me he was going to the school to talk to him. and i've forgotten her rank but or his rank i've forgotten but it was like the soldier the head soldier in charge of you know the whole you know all the schools in michelle camp and tell them that I can't come to work because I am sick and all of that. And they understood. And by the time I resumed work, everybody was just loving and supporting. All the students I worked with, the teachers I worked with, the soldiers I worked with, everybody was just loving and supportive. Even I would like to give credit to my headmistress especially and the French teacher I got to work with, Hajia and Donatien they were extremely kind to me you know i was supposed to go to work like from monday to friday but i spoke with them especially my headmistress and they agreed that i could come to work three times a week because on monday i had to go to um i had to go for review at the hospital and friday i wanted to use that day to rest so i got to come to school from tuesday wednesday thursday so I was teaching classes four, five, and six, and they, 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 they really forced for me. That's the word I use. They really forced for me. They didn't make me feel like, oh, you have a mental condition, so what? Like, go and sit somewhere. They understood that I, even though I am not fragile, they would give me the opportunity to work but if i need any reasonable accommodations i should let them know and i did let them know at a point even donacy and the friend teacher he told me you know what i will he would just teach classes four and five and i should just teach class six and it took away the stress because i'm telling you every class the numbers were large it's not easy managing um a large class marking books marking um exam papers those kind of things grading and all of those things it's a lot i always say teachers their work is truly a noble calling because if you do not have that kind of good heart patience like you cannot and so they being supportive to me that year i didn't have any relapse so because even though i was working and all of that because of the kind of support and love i was being given at work it's made it so exciting to want to go to school every day it made it so relaxing i knew that my school was like a safe haven there were times that i would need to you know rest take power naps my headmistress didn't have a problem with me using her office to just you know just take a power nap close my eyes and just rest a while because what people don't understand is when you have a mental health condition stress is a very big trigger for any episode so making sure you relax frequently it does put the stress at bay it's it's sort of, it's like detoxing yourself from stress so i was really grateful for that opportunity so shout out to hajia and donors for being one of the best employees ever i have ever worked with and this is just to say that if you're an employer employer and you have a staff who has a mental health condition speak with them one-on-one -on -one. ask them what reasonable accommodations they need and what they can do to be supportive i'm not saying go and be like what had you did for me do it for your staff because maybe in the type of workplace environment you have it may not work so you have to sit down with your staff and find out and my journey is completely different from that person's journey so even though it may be the same condition i have to find out what should be tailored to make to be made for them 
exactly my name is Esman, and today was the last day of my national service i was posted to a primary school and my headmistress was aware of my mental condition and did not make me feel worthless or isolated neither did the students or the other teachers and this is not the same in other places people are actually fired just because of their diagnosis as soon as their boss finds out that they develop a mental condition they are fired just like number that. two please and please and please employers if you find out that your staff has a mental health condition please do not use that as an opportunity to stigmatize and discriminate against them because i'm sure if you found out that maybe they had cancer or diabetes or high blood pressure oh i know you'll be super empathetic but for what sometimes happens is that some employers use that as an opportunity to quietly stigmatize and discriminate against you i'm saying quietly because it's not there in your face i'm laughing at you that i have a, a mental health condition or i'm discriminating it's like oh you are so fragile you can't do this you can't. you know there's a limit to these things when you continually stigmatize or discriminate against someone who has a mental health condition you have no idea the kind of burden that you are putting on them you know when you do that they may feel like you are treating them like they are not good enough because when you didn't know you were treating them just like everybody else but when you found out you are being extremely it's like you're literally walking on eggshells around the person treating the person in a way that doesn't make them feel like they are part of the organization one thing most persons living with mental health conditions really really love is when you treat them with kindness and treat them just like everybody else you do because you know when you live with a mental health condition you remember every day especially when you have to take your medication or you have to be extremely careful about doing certain things you know that i have a mental health condition the last thing i need from my employer is to remind me that i have a mental health condition and i'm too weak to be able to you know participate or be part of a team or to be able to do things that sometimes you're even qualified for the job but the employer feels no you have a mental health condition so you are no longer you know good enough for their job it's very very wrong so please employers do better when you find out you have your employee has a mental health condition don't use that as an opportunity to stigmatize and discriminate against them and the last thing that i would like to share is please and please employers do not disclose a person's mental health condition without their consent I have suffered this before, like I've been a victim of this. I was working at a school in 2019. This was my second job after national service. I am, I disclosed to my uh, employer at the time and she went and told all the other members of the organization, the school that have a mental health condition, I was called for a meeting less than 24 hours. I got fired from my job. I mean, who does that? Who does that? Why did you even ask me for my consent? And what is even bashing me is that she lied. She was like, oh, we are going to support you. We are going to love you. We are going to... Ugh. Why? She didn't do that. She didn't support and love me. What she did was she went and told all the members of management that I have a mental health condition. I'm sure if I told her I had a physical, chronic physical condition, she wouldn't have said anything. But, but once it was mental health related, that's where the problem came in. And why? And what is even bashing me is that, you know, I actually told this woman that I had this condition whilst I was in university. I was able to go and do a study abroad program, come back, reset three courses I filled. I don't remember if I added that, but I was able to graduate with all this drama and burden and load I had to carry. I still was able to get my act together, graduate, and be the pretty person and smart person who is teaching your children. But still, she wasn't convinced. No, no, no. She wasn't convinced. In fact, it's like, I just, what I just told her was just the perfect thing to, you know, get rid of me. And 
that's cool it's a whole topic on its own because i feel like maybe the plan was to get rid of me because i had doing open an open forum situation type of thing i voiced out some of the concerns of some of the teachers there like we closing late and you know maybe when i said that i just put a target on my back without me but me the reason why i was concerned about going home early was because me i knew i had to take medication to sleep and the earlier i take it the more i will be able to wake up early and feel refreshed and you know not drowsy or anything that's i mean i just i feel like i just put a target on my back and so i would just you know share these few things with employers and please make sure that you are there for the start because you don't know it could be your start today it could be you tomorrow so do not stigmatize and discriminate against persons with mental health conditions thank you so much for watching and to all the people living with mental health conditions have lived experience i just want to say you are the greatest of all time don't look down on yourself and made it this far you can also do it. thank you so much for watching hello my name is jesse Fori. And as we mark World Mental Health Day, I want you to know that you are not alone in your struggles. Yes, I'm talking to you. You are not alone in your struggles. There is always hope. There is hope today. There is hope tomorrow. So hang in there. Hang in there. Hang in there.